If you choose something, choose it with all your might, with all your heart. Don't be faint hearted. Keep going. Keep moving toward it. Be determined. You are a creative being made in the image and likeness of God. You may have whatever you choose, but you may not have anything you want. Because thoughts are creative. And the thought of wanting a thing is a statement to the universe, a declaration of truth, which the universe then produces in my reality. The moment you say, I want something, the universe says, indeed you do. And it gives you that precise experience, the experience of wanting it. Remember that whatever you put after the word I becomes your creative command. The genie in the bottle, which I am, exists but to obey. I produce what you call forth. You call forth precisely what you think, feel, and say. It is as simple as that. There should be only one consideration when making any decision. Is this a statement of who I am? Is this an announcement of who I choose to be? All of life should be such an announcement. In fact, all of life is. You can allow that announcement to be made by any choice. A life lived by choice is a life of conscious action. A life lived by chance is a life of unconscious reaction. Reaction is just that, an action you have taken before. When you react, what you do is assess the incoming data, search your memory bank for a similar experience, and act the way you did before. This is all the work of the mind, not of your soul. Your soul would have you search its memory to see how you might create a truly genuine experience of you, the moment of now. This is the experience of soul searching. But you have to be literally out of your mind to do it. When you use your mind, you spend your time trying to figure out what's best for you. You end up doing just that, spending your time. Better to save your time than spend it wastefully. It's a great time saver to be out of your mind. Decisions are reached quickly. Choices are activated rapidly. Because your soul creates out of present experience. Only without review, analysis, and criticism of past experience. Remember this. The soul creates. The mind reacts. The soul knows in its wisdom that the experience you are having in this moment is an experience sent to you by God before you had any conscious awareness of it. This is what is meant by a present moment. It's already on the way to you even as you are seeking it. For even before you ask, I shall have answered. Every now moment is a glorious gift from God. That is why it's called the present the soul intuitively seeks the perfect circumstances and situations now needed to heal wrong thought and bring you the rightful experience of who you are. It is the soul's desire to bring you back to God, to bring you home to me. It is the soul's intention to know itself experientially and thus to know me. For the soul understands that you and I are one. Even as the mind denies this truth and the body acts out this denial. Therefore, in moments of great decision, be out of your mind and do some soul searching instead. The soul understands what the mind cannot conceive. If you spend your time trying to figure out what's best for you, your choices will be cautious. Your decision will take forever and your journey will be launched on a sea of expectation you are not careful, you will drown in your expectations. The soul speaks to you in feelings. Listen to your feelings. Follow your feelings. Honor your feelings. I tell you this, your feelings will never get you into trouble because your feelings are your truth. If you want a life where you never follow your feelings, but where every feeling is filtered through the machinery of your mind, go right ahead. 
Make your decisions based on your mind's analysis of the situation. But don't look for joy in such mechanisms, nor for celebration of who you truly are. Remember this, true celebration is mindless. If you listen to your soul, you will know what is best for you because what is best for you is what is true for you. When you act only out of what is true for you, you speed your way down the path. When you create an experience based on your now truth rather than react to an experience based on a past truth, you produce a new you. Why does it take so much time to create the reality you choose? This is why. Because you have not been living your truth. Know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Yet once you have come to know your truth, don't keep changing your mind about it. There goes your mind trying to figure out what's best. Stop it. Get out of your mind. Get back to your senses. Return to how you feel, not to how you think. Your thoughts are only thoughts, mental constructions, made up creations of your mind. But your feelings, now they are real. Feelings are the language of the soul. And your soul is your truth. Feelings are neither negative nor destructive. They are simple truths. How you express your truth is what matters. When you express your truth with love, negativity and damaging results rarely occur. And when they do, it is usually because someone else has chosen to experience your truth as a negative. Certainly, failing to express your truth would hardly be, be appropriate. Yet people do this all the time. So afraid are they to cause or to face possible unpleasantness that they hide the truth altogether. Remember this. It is not nearly so important how well a message is received as how well it is sent. You cannot take responsibility for how well another accepts your truth. You can only ensure how well it is communicated. And by how well, I don't mean how clearly, I mean how lovingly, how compassionately, how sensitively, how courageously, and how completely. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. It's the so help you God part that brings in the godly qualities of love and compassion. For I will help you communicate in this way always if you ask me. Feelings are the language of the soul. But you must make sure you are listening to your true feelings and not some counterfeit model constructed in the mind. Some feelings are true feelings, that is, feelings born in the soul. And some feelings are counterfeit feelings. Those are constructed in your mind. In other words, they are not feelings at all. They are thoughts. Thoughts masquerading as feelings. The greatest challenge as human beings is to be here now, to stop making things up. Stop creating thoughts about a present moment. Be in the moment. Remember, you sent yourself this moment as a gift. This moment contained the seed of a tremendous truth. It is a truth you wish to remember. Yet when the moment arrived, you immediately began constructing thoughts about it. Instead of being in the moment, you stood outside the moment and judged it. Then you reacted. That is, you acted as you did once before. Now look at these two words. Reactive. Creative. Notice they are the same word, only the C has been moved. When you see things correctly, life becomes creative rather than reactive. When you come to each moment cleanly, without a previous thought about it, you can create who you are rather than reenact who you once were. Life is a process of creation. And you keep living as if it is a process of reenactment. Be here now. See what there is to work with right now.
in creating yourself anew. Remember, this is what you are doing here. You have come to this world in this way, at this time, in this place, to know who you are and to create who you wish to be. This is the purpose of all life. Life is an ongoing, never-ending process of recreation. You keep recreating yourselves in the image of your next highest idea about yourselves. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Jesus demonstrated godliness by demonstrating unity and seeing unity and wholeness wherever and upon whomever he looked. In this his consciousness and my consciousness were one and in such a state. Whatever he called forth was made manifest in his divine reality. In that holy moment, many have been Christed, not just Jesus of Nazareth. You can be Christed too by seeking to be, by choosing to be. But it is a choice you must make every day, every minute, every second. It must become the very purpose of your life. It is the purpose of your life. You simply do not know it. And even if you know it, even if you remember the exquisite reason for your very existence, you do not seem to know how to get there from where you are. I tell you this, you want to be Christed, act like Christ. Every minute of every day. It's not that you don't know how. He has shown you the way. Be like Christ in every circumstance. It's not that you can't. He has left you instructions. You are not without help in this, should you seek it. I am giving you guidance every minute of every day. I am the still, small voice within which knows which way to turn, which path to take, which answer to give, which action to implement, which word to say, which reality to create. If you truly seek communion and unity with me, just listen to me. I am with you always, even unto the end of time. Do you believe this? To some of you, I am pure energy. To some, the ultimate feeling, which you call love. And some of you have no idea what I am. You simply know that I am. And so it is. I am. I am. I am the wind that rustles your hair. I am the sun that warms your body. I am the rain which dances on your face. I am the smell of flowers in the air, and I am the flowers which send their fragrance upward. I am the air which carries the fragrance. I am the beginning of your first thought. I am the end of your last. I am the idea which sparked your most brilliant moment. I am the glory of its fulfillment. I am the feeling which fueled the most loving thing you ever did. I am the part of you which yearns for that feeling again and again and again. Whatever works for you, whatever makes it happen, whatever ritual, ceremony, demonstration, meditation, thought, song, word, or action, whatever it takes for you to reconnect, do this. Do this in remembrance of me, 